Imagine a world where the harder you try, the less you succeed. A place where the more efforts you put into something, the further away your desired outcome seems. Simply put, the harder we work at something, the less effective we are. It seems paradoxical, doesn't it? Well, welcome to the intriguing philosophy known as the law of reversed effort. I quote, muddy water is best cleared by leaving it alone. End quote. A great example of this is insomnia. For six months, I couldn't sleep. Sleep is an entirely subconscious process, and willing yourself to or trying to sleep has exactly the opposite effect. The more you think about sleeping and tell yourself to get to sleep, the more awake you become. Or think about it this way, when you are swimming, if you want to float, what happens? You start to drift and sink. If you want to sink and push down, your body fights against you to push you back towards the surface. If you want to sink, you float. This is a simple example of law of reversed effort in action. It's a paradoxical truth that the more we try to control something, the more it slips away from our craps. It's as if our very resilience amplifies the power of the obstacle, creating a cycle of frustration and disappointment. But why does this happen? This law exists because our conscious mind and our unconscious mind are often in conflict, and the unconscious mind wins. Why? Because it is our protector and it is rarely rational. The French psychologist Emile Coup defined the law of reversed efforts and said, when the imagination and willpower are in conflict, it is always the imagination which wins, without any exception. In other words, a person's subconscious mind will accept the dominant idea of the mind no matter what you're trying to impress on it using your willpower. The law of reversed efforts suggests a radical alternative, that by letting go of our attachment to the outcome and surrender to the natural flow of life, we can actually achieve more with less efforts. It's about working in harmony with the universe rather than fighting against it. Imagine a river flowing downstream effortlessly, flowing its course with grace and ease. Now imagine trying to swim against that current, fighting against its relentless force. The harder you struggle, the more you exhaust yourself, only to find yourself in the same place. Similarly, when we learn to align ourselves with the natural rhythms of life, we tap into a profound source of power. By releasing our attachment to outcomes and trusting in the process, we allow space for creativity, inspiration, and unforeseen opportunities to enter our lives. This philosophy challenges our deep-rooted beliefs about striving and achieving. It invites us to embrace the paradox that sometimes doing less can lead to accomplishing more. To avoid any conflicts between aspiration and mind, or between universe and you, the easiest way to relax consists deeply to be in a state of increased receptivity, in which conscious mental activities are minimized. Well. There are a few moments for this, before sleep and after sleep, when we are not fully awakened. In those moments, there are no negative thoughts or other issues that we grind. If we have such negative thoughts, we feel them weed with not impact on us. And we realize that nobody gives a fuck about them in that moment. Take your goals into contemplation and focus on relaxing, letting go of negative feelings associated with not achieving this goal. Set up a positive image about the goal, then put feelings with it. Nothing is simple, but everything is worth trying. Hard work will take you far in life, no doubt. Just know the difference between working hard and trying too hard. Forcing things to work in our favor is faulty from the explanation. Allow things to flow naturally and do your best, but don't kill yourself. In every aspect of our life, the key to success is in that. A good way to reduce your work is to find something you are meant for, your purpose in life. And to find that purpose, click here.